we talked about the scientific revolution and how um, how, how we came how we came into the the modern world. Uh, the modern scientific world. We looked at some of those famous scientists and philosophers, and um, uh, then we looked at the Industrial Revolution. And the Industrial Revolution took place in the 18th century um, with the invention of the uh, coal-powered steam engine. And with the invention of the coal-powered steam engine. Um, this allowed for industry to emerge, like heavy, um, heavy industry, um, machinery factories that um, um, could be applied towards manufacturing, and you know, so we live in we live in the industrial era. That's what we've been talking about, <clears throat> and. Um, Last week, I wasn't able to talk about some of the um, some aspects of the Industrial Revolution, the advantages and the disadvantages, um, and I want to talk about that tonight. Welcome. Um, and then we will be um, exploring, well, as you can see from the title, industrial sectors. So... Um, if you're looking to gain vocabulary, gain knowledge um, for professional reasons, <clears throat> if you work in manufacturing or sales or trade, um, <clears throat> construction, I guess, and um, all the different services, banking, uh, medicine, healthcare, retail, leisure, tourism, entertainment, these lessons are for you. Um, <clears throat> now, um, it is a little, uh, it's sometimes a little difficult to conduct these kinds of lessons. I have no feedback. In other words, I have no real understanding, communication with who I'm speaking with. So I don't know if you understand me or not. I don't know if... Um, I need to make this challenging uh, or challenging. You know, you have an interest in this topic, and I want to continue to provide that. Um, so again, for those new people, and if it's not if it's not for you, that's fine. There's other teachers that teach other things. Um, but if 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 this is an area that is important for you, this is what I'm going to provide. Um, please do join the study group where I provide the worksheet. What you see here are 24 words uh, commonly found in the discourse of business and manufacturing. And down below, you see um, a kind of a diagram, a conceptual model. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> um, You know, business and economics is a social science. And I hope you caught my science lesson. Um, you can always look at previous lessons if you would like links to that. I'm able to provide that in the study group. And I'm going to be coming back to uh, science quite a bit so long as, um, so long as I'm still here. Um, so we'll look at the social sciences and the business, uh, business and economics as a science. Uh, don't expect you to be able to see everything that's happening in this kind of um, chart, but in the middle we have industries, and then on one side we have goods producing, and on another side we have service providing. So a conceptual model, a way of thinking about um, uh, the economy and industry, particularly as it um, relates to manufacturing, will come to services sometime in the future. I have a lot to say on the topic of manufacturing. In fact, uh, if I could just find it, um, there are at least a dozen different manufacturing sectors. 
and I've already prepared a lesson for each one of these types of sectors where we will look at um, different types of like products, consumable products that we buy, food and beverage, um, clothing, textiles, uh, wood products, paper, petroleum and coal, like uh, fuel and other ways that petroleum is used in manufacturing, chemical, chemical refining, uh, plastics, rubber. So um, we have um, a lot of industries to cover. Um, I have videos um, that can um, kind of show you the manufacturing processes for those of you that are like students, especially. I think you'd find this really interesting finding out like how paper is made or how wool and cotton is transformed into 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 thread that can be used for uh, manufacturing fabrics or how how do how are plastic bottles manufactured it's business and science and engineering manufacturing so um, what I uh, what the goal is for today is to um, review a little bit of what we did in the previous lesson in terms of um, summing up, reviewing, summarizing what the significance of the Industrial Revolution was in today's, you know, uh, modern industrial era, the economy that we live in. We're still in the Industrial Revolution. We're just kind of in a more technical, technological uh, evolutionary stage of the Industrial Revolution. Um, and uh, and then we're going to be, you know, the title of the lesson is Industrial Sectors Overview. So I want to show you, kind of introduce you to the names, the vocabulary of all of these different kinds of industries. Um, uh, and uh, we'll be focusing on the manufacturing industries today and in subsequent lessons. And once we get through that, we'll begin to look at the service industries as well. Um, okay, so outline. We want to define industry. Uh, we want to explore the economic industrial sectors. Um, uh, and then we'll look at some, uh, some, some industries, uh, these, these primary and secondary industries, agriculture, mining, construction, and some manufacturing. Um, so, uh, back to the worksheet for a moment. Uh, this model, it's just useful for um, categorizing, classifying the different kinds of work um, done in the production chain. Like, in order to make something like a mobile phone, Think about all of the stages of production. It's a production chain. You've got to get the materials, like the, the minerals from the mine. And, um, you know, some of it, some of it, uh, some of the components and some of the materials of this mobile phone are rare minerals mined out of Africa. And then we have more common materials, like this rubbery, uh, case, um, and all the electrical um, circuitry inside. Um, so, um, from, you know, uh, you buying this phone in the shop to this phone being shipped to a shop from a factory to the factory assembling all of the different components and the R&D department, you know, and the engineers designing this kind of technology to um, uh, the the raw materials extracted from the natural world, the natural earth. This is the production chain that gives us these amazing devices, these amazing uh, consumer devices. So uh, everything comes from the earth. Uh, our food our material, our clothing materials, our building materials for our homes and uh, the kind of minerals for our uh, phones to the um, 
fuel that we burn to power these kinds of devices. Uh, so that's the primary sector. The primary sector is the sector of the industry. It's all of those jobs, all of those companies, all of those firms that uh, are engaged in the business of extracting the raw materials needed for the manufacturing, needed for the production. So we see basic production, agriculture, mining, forestry, fishery. So the main, you know, the main kinds of industries here are where we get our food and clothing and building materials, agriculture and uh, uh, forestry and mining and fishery. And then we have the whole manufacturing factory production. Production of goods, as well as construction and trades. And finally, the one at the very top, this is the services sector. I'm not going to talk too much about services today, but you can imagine banks, transport, education, anything where you're not buying a physical good, but you're paying for a service. You're paying for somebody to do some kind of work for you. A restaurant is a service. A bank is a service. A retail shop is a service. Uh, here's the um, vocabulary. Um, kind of a, a random assortment, actually. Um, I just thought I'd, yeah, I'd gather some words that may be unfamiliar to you now. A, an appliance is a kind of an electrical, or sorry, an appliance is a is an elect uh, uh, um, uh, falls under uh, the uh, category of electronics. You have small uh, electronics such as a mobile phone or a computer or a TV, and then you have appliances. These are your um, uh, refrigerators, air conditioners. Um, heaters and um, uh, these kinds of things, okay? That's an appliance. Civil engineering. Civil means um, public, I guess, like city planning, city building. Components. A component is a part um, used in the manufacturing. Construction. Building houses, building roads, um, building bridges. Uh, consumerism. We touched on that very briefly uh, last week, how after the Industrial Revolution, you had um, all of the production done in factories owned by these um, wealthy capitalist uh, entrepreneurs. And, um, um, you know, we, we transitioned from the kind of a society where things were generally made locally by craft, craftsmen to components being manufactured in separate factories and shipped around globally for um, the, the sake of efficiency. And um, therefore, all countries rely on, you know, all countries are in, interdependent upon each other uh, because, um, you know, everyone everywhere in the world understands the necessity of a mobile phone, and this mobile phone was designed by, you know, um, uh, uh, an American company, manufactured uh, in uh, mostly in Asia, uh, with materials gathered from all over the world, probably predominantly Africa, um, and therefore, uh, and then sold everywhere, right? Um, perhaps this was imported in from uh, another country. Maybe this was imported from the United States. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, we, 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 uh, we, we, we can purchase these global products in any country and they're made in multiple countries. And therefore, like, um, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's what consumerism is, basically. Um, um, many, many different stages of production and many, many different nations rely upon this, this global interdependence of uh, countries trading with each other in order to keep the economy uh, uh, growing, in order to keep people working, basically. Um, employment, working. Uh, extraction, to take, okay? So we'll be talking about extraction industries or primary sector industries, farming, fishing, forestry, mining, where we take raw materials or natural resources from the earth. That's called extraction. Sometimes you have to refine and process those natural resources. Like uh, you cut down a tree and then that tree needs to be um, processed a little bit. You need to, you know, remove all of the weight, uh, the excess bark and uh, cut it into usable lengths, I guess, and ship it. 
So you could think of um, when it comes to building materials, concrete used in building um, houses and roads and so on, that's a kind of a rock. But it's rock that has been mined out of a quarry and then again processed with other types of minerals added into it to make it a useful building material. So that could be considered extraction too, where you, you gather the natural resources like rock or lumber or wool or something like that, and then you process it so that it can be a raw material. There's like a natural resource, a tree, uh, the, the wool sheared from a sheep, or a piece of ore that can be like um, smelted into steel or iron or whatever the case may be. We'll be looking at that later, I promise you. Uh, that's extraction. Fossil fuel, coal, oil, um, natural gas, the kind of fuels that we burn for energy, drive our cars, power our factories, heat and light our homes. Uh, industrialism, I'll get to the definition to, of that. I've, I've covered that in the previous lesson. I'll get to it again. A market, the market, I mean, a market is where you go and buy goods. The market is where we talk about uh, there's the total market where all of the buying and selling is done and then we can like uh, look at specific markets like the mobile phone market or the uh, automobile market and within those markets you have these different um, firms competing for market share and you have these different consumers who you know like a consumer if you um, if you have a family and a full-time job chances are you are in the market for an automobile. That makes you an automobile type of a consumer. If you're, if you're not, uh, and you, you, know, you don't need to do much commuting, you're probably not in that market. Right? So we can talk about different types of consumers belonging to different kinds of markets and different kinds of firms competing in those markets. A merchant wholesaler. Well, a merchant is uh, a trader, basically. And a wholesaler is somebody who buys uh, in bulk from a factory and then um, distributes, distributes it out to other um, retailers, basically. You could say that uh, Taobao, quite a few of these vendors on Taobao are merchant wholesalers and that they ship directly from the factory. Mining is the uh, 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 extracting of minerals, rock, and metal uh, from a uh, mine. A natural resource, anything from the earth that we can make use of. Production, another word for manufacturing. Professional, a professional, you could say that anybody that has a full-time job um, is a professional, I suppose, but there is a certain like category or class of professionals that have the requisite amount of uh, education, uh, training, qualifications to, like a doctor is a professional, a lawyer is a professional. You can say that an electrician and a carpenter are professional, uh, you know, they're professionals basically. Skilled laborers. Raw materials, mm, natural resources are processed into, nat into raw materials, which are then uh, used to manufacture into components, assembled into an end product. Revenue, sales, uh, money generated. Uh, technician, a kind of a professional, somebody who maintains uh, like an engineer in a factory, perhaps, that uh, maintains the, uh, the machines or does, like, kind of, um, what do you call, uh, alterations or uh, fitting of machines. A technician is somebody who comes and repairs your, uh, repairs your, uh, your car, maybe, I guess. Uh, trades, another kind of like a plumber, electrician, carpenters, people that work in um, construction predominantly. Uh, utility, um, uh, energy, water, heat, these, uh, I don't know, you couldn't call them, like there's fuel. You, you know, we, 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 we pay a, 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 an energy bill for the electricity that we use. We pay a gas bill for the amount of gas that we use in our cooking. We pay a water bill for the amount of water that we use. These are the kinds of utilities. And I guess you could say that your mobile phone uh, monthly fee is also a utility. Um, value. Value worth the um, degree to which we want and use something. 
Um, we could also say that um, um, the the value of a product, like the price of a product, should match its value. If the value is greater than the price of the product, then you should be very happy, right? If the value is less, then you shouldn't. You should be unsatisfied, right? So we, we place a kind of a emotional or psychological value um, on the things that we buy based on how satisfied we are with like how it satisfies our needs, how it lives up to our expectations. Uh, that's value there. Um, tra a vendor, a retailer, or somebody who is selling from a wholesaler to a consumer, and a warehouse is where uh, these kinds of um, goods are kept. Now, um, um, you know, so I, every lesson I try to give you at least 25 new words, uh, 24, 25 new words. And um, if you're following along, sometimes these words are covered in other lessons and we get the benefit of a review. We're also going to be covering lots of new words as well. Um, so let's let's get into it. So our goal is to, uh, you know, the subsectors are the primary, secondary, tertiary. Industrialism, social or economic system in which manufacturing industries are prevalent. So if you can think of a developing country that doesn't have a well-developed uh, industrial uh, economy, basically, um, most of Africa, I'm sorry, is uh, you know people living on sustenance, uh, uh, sustenance lifestyle of farming. They don't have full-time jobs. Uh, they're living off of the land. So this is like a pre-industrial type of a society, or an unindustrialized or developing kind of a society. And um, a post-industrial society is one in which They've gone through that stage of industrialism and uh, all of the wealth uh, that was uh, generated through that period of their economic evolution um, has now been kind of um, surpassed, I suppose. Now you have people working in the services industry. This is the economic theory. It's very much um, uh, being tested right now in the year 2020, I suppose, as to whether or not it's a sustainable economic model. Sustainable. Industrialization, the development of industries. An industry is a sector that produces goods or related services within an economy. So, you know, your food, food industry, your education, education industry, your travel, travel industry, everything that you consume. You know, there's a sec there's an industry behind it, with lots of different firms and uh, professions. You know, people people working uh, to deliver these goods and services for us. Major source of revenue of a group or company is an indicator of oh, sorry of, is an indicator of what it should be classified in. Uh, so you know, uh, here we have a bunch of global brands. Uh, technological uh, brands like Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Samsung, Facebook, Oracle. You know these are these these are tech companies in the IT tech industry. Some of these are hardware manufacturers like Apple and Samsung. They make electronics, and then we have. Uh, software, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, these are, you know, computer APPs or computer software systems. Um, clothing, you know, clothing companies, automotive companies. Some of these companies are very large and they are involved in many different industrial sectors like, um, I don't know, maybe Pepsi and Coca-Cola. 
they're they're well, you know, these two brands are known for their soft drink, but I'm sure that the Coca-Cola company is involved in uh, quite a number of other types of industries. You could say that Disney as an entertainment industry, you know, does amusement parks, does merchandise, does movies and TV shows. Um, so the um, major source of a revenue of a group of companies is an, indis- in, is an indicator of what sector it should be classified in. Um, when a large group or corp, well, sorry, when a large corporate group has multiple sources of revenue generation, it is considered to be working in different industries. As I just explained, the manufacturing industry became a key sector of production and labor in the European and North American countries during the Industrial Revolution. So, hopefully, you caught the lesson on the Industrial Revolution as kind of an extension of the Scientific Revolution and. It was a difficult time, but uh, a necessary stage in our uh, in our evolution as a society, as a, as a civilization, and I'll explain why. Um, it was uh, in the late 18th and 19th centuries, following the scientific revolution of the 16th and 17th centuries, a technological revolution occurred in Britain. This revolution changed the production of textiles and iron making. Textiles, fabric, iron making, um, iron is a metal. Uh, uh, From manual labor to mechanical production. So the steam engine and the uh, coal furnace, I guess, um, was able to um, um, just increase the capacity of uh, manufacturing and processing. So... Um, you know, one, once uh, once they were able to um, safely uh, and um, efficiently uh, smelt and process iron, this became uh, a raw material that could be used for the manufacturing of automobiles and trains and even construction. So now you could build these larger buildings, these skyscrapers and these... Um, you know, these the cities basically it was a result of being able to, um, I forget what the word is, um, I got to say like fortify iron to make it stronger basically, and then they um, came up with steel, combining uh, some elements of iron with other minerals to produce a lighter, more flexible, and very durable type of metal for um you know, for building basically. So it was uh, iron and the uh, coal-powered furnace and the steam engine that um, was the catalyst for the Industrial Revolution. And that took place in Britain, and therefore that's kind of why Britain was one of the uh, strongest economic and uh, military uh, economic and military countries of uh, that time. And so this revolution changed production of textiles and iron making from manual labor to mechanical production. Machines made production faster. More goods were produced for lower costs. The Industrial Revolution brought many benefits and drawbacks. It stimulated a number of inventions and interest in scientific inquiry, which led to other discoveries that could improve the quality of life. So as a, you know... um, uh, as, as an effect of having um, um, uh, people coming in from the rural country into the cities to work in factories, they got to learn skills. Like they got to learn these practical, useful um, skills that they could um, then earn a wage for. So these 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 types of people. Um, prior to the Industrial Revolution were peasant farmers and um, they worked very hard growing, uh, you know, growing food. And it was basically a very uh, kind of uninteresting life. It was very difficult in the early stages of the Industrial Revolution, uh, you know, because people didn't um, command a very high wage, but they were learning skills and they were passing those, um, like, you know, fathers were passing those skills on to their children, mothers, and so on and so forth. Um, and then um, uh, as, 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 as um, 
and, and, and this and this gave rise to the public education system where again like people people uh, were given opportunities to learn to read and write and then um, more and more people went on to graduating high school and going into post secondary education giving rise to uh, the kind of post industrial technological service um, type of uh, economy that we live in now so that's just kind of how it worked out. Um, we should be grateful for the work that our ancestors did to give us this kind of um, wealth that we can now uh, enjoy. Um, and we'll look at some of these interesting inventions. During the early day of the Industrial Revolution, workers were made to live in cramped slums. So this is a this is a a disadvantage, right? This is a, a real cost. Uh, they were poorly paid, and the work was tire, tiring and oftentimes dangerous. Uh, industrialism, capitalism, and consumerism requires continual economic growth, increased production, and decreasing costs on consumer goods. This can be seen as a benefit in the short term. In other words, um, as... Um, uh, as um, factories kind of scale up, or these these firms uh, that um, you know produce these kinds of products scale up, um, the cost of production goes down, and therefore the price of the consumer good also goes down. So we can, you know, something like a mobile phone in the year 2020 shouldn't cost you more than three, four, five hundred American dollars, or somewhere between. Three and uh, five thousand um, Chinese RMB uh, in the year 2020. That's that's fairly affordable. Most people can afford that, and it can last you for a good long time too. Um, going back five, ten years, five years, um, cost of one of these things was significantly higher, and very f and fewer people could afford these sorts of things. And now everyone can afford these things, and everybody can enjoy uh, the uh, the benefits. Uh, that these things provide. So that's a benefit, like that's a real plus. But on the other hand, uh, it leads to long-term problems including resource depletion, toxic air, water and soil pollution, which is harmful to our environment and health and well-being. So what are those advantages and disadvantages? People lived uninteresting lives. They were fairly poorly educated and they lived Mostly in, in kind of a in kind of a poverty for hundreds of years, and then uh, the industrial revolution resulted in an improvement of the standard of living for some. Um, yeah, maybe like one percent, <laughs> uh, but for most of the working classes, the conditions were very difficult. Women and children were made to work in factories because they had specialized skills that made them better laborers than men, such as sewing and maintaining machinery. So they employed children because they had small hands, and that was not um, that was uh, a form of exploitation. Basically, children, you know, should not be. It was a form of slavery. Basically, you had uh, you had a lot of uh, slavery was very prevalent during the 16th to uh, end of the 19th century. Basically. Um, not yeah. Anyway, um, laws were later passed allowing workers in the form of protections from abuse and exploitation. So, um, laws were passed giving workers the rights to, uh, like a forty-hour work week, for example. We celebrate the Workers' Day in May. Um, these rights of workers were won through um, protest and struggle and union labor organizing. Um, and we enjoy the benefits of those uh, those rights that uh, those um, those union organizers um, agitated for. Um, children were forbidden to work. New laws required children to attend public schools up until the age of ten and later sixteen. So up until the industrial revolution, um, it wasn't required that students went to school. I think that a community may have had a school to teach children very basic you know, grammar skills, maybe a bit of reading, but they typically dropped out at the age of 10 or 12 if they weren't very clever and uh, just, you know, lived out their lives mostly ignorant, 
uh, working on the farm or working in some kind of trade like um, being a tailor or being a blacksmith or being um, a farmer or something like that, okay? The modern public education system was therefore created to prepare young people for jobs in the new modern industrial scientific society. Think of all those different branches of sciences. Uh, you know, science is the way of the future. And um, with each kind of generation, new areas of science are opening up and more and more people are going into these scientific fields and, you know, this is the hope of mankind, I think. Um, now, again, during the Industrial Revolution, companies in the iron and textile manufacturing greatly moved the process of technological advancement forward. So it was capitalism. And, um, well, like we talked about how, you know, the evolution of science was the evolution of tool making. People became interested in the natural world and explaining the, you know, the way that the natural world worked so that they could, uh, so that they could exploit it and um, tools and so on. So iron, uh, the predecessor to steel, uh, was a common choice of metal for manufactured goods, textiles, uh, cloth and clothing. So uh, these were some of those early industries, basically. And then maybe transportation um, with the railway systems and then the automobile, and then telecommunications, um, economic, and then finance, banking, credit. Um, more and more businesses, again, like wealth did accumulate among uh, more and more people and more and more people became uh, middle class and possibly entrepreneurs. Um, there was just room in the economy, room in the market for, uh, you know, for uh, individuals with modest means to become entrepreneurs and, um, you know, become like maybe retailers or traders Um so, uh, the, again, like the, the 20th century, late 19th century, 20th century, um, was a very exciting time um, with, the, with the construction of these modern-day cities. The Industrial Revolution also saw improvements in transportation, uh, communication, banking, allowing greater economic development and further industrialization. In this map... Uh, the dark brown, these are the high income economies, so Canada, the United States, um, Europe, Spain, France, Germany, the UK, Australia, uh, I don't know, the Finland and uh, Den uh, Denmark, I think, S uh, Sweden, okay. Uh, so these are the wealthy nations, and then you can see... Uh, in the Middle East, there's uh, Saudi Arabia, and I think um, Dubai is located there. And that's a very wealthy nation because that's kind of the capital of um, where uh, oil, fossil fuels um, is um, situated. And then we have the higher middle income, so that orange, uh, lower middle income, um, uh, Central Asia and uh, e uh, Eastern Europe and parts of Africa and then low income and that's most of Africa and uh, India and China and Southeast Asian countries. So that's just, uh, you know, um, uh, a kind of a, a an estimate or an approximation on uh, which areas of the world, the globe, are um, considered high-income countries and low-income countries. In other words, on average, per capita, you know, a lot of people in China are making a lot of money, but per capita, you know, if you take everyone in the country, 1.55 billion people, maybe 70 to 80 percent of those people are in a very low income category. Um, anyway, so today regions of the world are classified into developed and developing and undeveloped based upon the degree to which they have industrialized their economies and the degree to which people are earning a kind of income that um, 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 meets a certain living need, living standard. So global corporations, 
consumerism. Um, what do we see here? We see computers, iPads, mobile phones, speakers, headphones, sporting equipment, um, like uh, cosmetics and personal care products and uh, clothing, you know, just everyday uh, stationery and office stuff, just everyday stuff that everybody um, sort of takes for granted. Affordable products that we use and take for granted every day come about as the result of this historical event. Um, the Industrial Revolution improved our quality of life in profound ways. I really hope that um, I can impress upon you this, uh, you know, this idea, how lucky we are um, to have all of this great stuff, uh, cheap, uh, cheaply available to us, an abundant supply. Uh, unfortunately, we need to um, maybe reconsider, um, you know, because these products are so cheap, um, well, they are they are cheap because the true cost to the environment is not factored into the price or the cost of production. So environmental problems. Deforestation. Um, you know, uh, th these forests are cut down for lumber. Or perhaps these forests um, are being cut down for farmland so that we can, you know, grow uh, cattle uh, or, or sheep or something like that. And of course, deforestation is a terrible thing, not only because it's uh, endangers wildlife, um, um, uh, but it also contributes to global warming because these uh, these these trees are what provide oxygen and capture carbon dioxide. So deforestation is a very serious problem. Um, um, uh, just the kind of waste. The rubbish that um, we have no place to put it, so it's, it's ending up on our beaches and in our rivers and our lakes. And um, uh, this is uh, like this is just water pollution factories, especially chemical refining factories and uh, petroleum refining factories, and you know any kind of a factory is usually situated on a lake or near body of water because they can just dump their uh, their effluent, their, their waste into the ocean and kind of dissipates and disperses and it doesn't really make a big difference today, but it all, it all adds up. Um, and it, it looks a little bit disgusting. And it's very unhealthy for the, the ecosystem there. And again, oceans are another kind of carbon sink where uh, you have uh, you know plant life in the ocean that is uh, capturing carbon dioxide. And if we kill, if we kill the plants by cutting down trees, and um, poisoning our rivers and lakes and oceans. We're really, really, really um, playing a dangerous game. Air pollution. So, one of the uh, serious problems that we face is environmental pollution. Industrialization introduces many new problems including pollution, increased waste, and the destruction of the Earth's natural environment. For example, the consumption of natural resources. Here we have um, um, one, two, well, nine of the most common, most significant environmental problems. Not able to really read, well, I could read it. Um, Okay. Ah, never mind. <laughs> it's just an infographic. But we have global warming. Um, I'm going to have an environmental problems lesson, and I'll explain what global warming is. Acid rain. Hopefully you know, because you're a student at our school, and we teach this stuff. Uh, waste disposal. You can kind of see that. You know, Where do you put the rubbish? Air pollution. Um... The, the, deple the depletion of natural resources, fuel, water, um, rare minerals, um, water pollution, deforestation, and overpopulation. So we'll be coming back to that at some point.
This is the model that you have on your worksheet. The primary and secondary and tertiary sectors represent various business types and the goods and uh, the goods they produce and sell. Uh, the model represents a chain of production from extracting raw materials uh, through manufacturing and finally servicing to the end consumer. And each sector relies on each other sector. Okay, so um, the primary sector, the one that's at the bottom of the pyramid, the resource extraction sector of the uh, economy, let's say, industrial sector economic model. Primary sector of the economy can be classified as an extractive industry. These include the industries that produce or extract raw materials. Farmers are an example of primary sector workers as food items are collected as raw materials, such as wheat and milk, and taken from the farm and made into other products such as wheat and cheese, the bread, uh, sorry, bread and cheese, <laughs> right? Milk becomes cheese, wheat becomes bread and flour. And other industries include mining, such as coal, iron, or oil, which extract the raw materials from the ground. So uh, it all begins with the uh, natural resources extraction and then um, construction manufacturing. So this is agriculture. And this we call cattle, livestock. We don't say a cow farm. We say a cattle farm or a cattle ranch. Um, cattle is just a, I don't know, maybe a scientific or euphemism, euphemistic term for cows that are grown and raised for uh, food, basically, milk and meat, cattle, a cattle ranch. So uh, cattle are... Uh, raised on ranches where they spend their lives grazing, eating grass. Um, uh, poultry, P-O, well, poultry, chicken for eggs and meat. Pork. And uh, lamb and wool. Again, the, the hair of the, the sheep is used in a lot of our uh, clothing. Um, this is called forestry and Forestry is about maintaining forests. You don't just have to cut the entire forest down. You can manage a forest so that you cut certain areas of the forest down, and then you plant, and then you go and cut another area, and then you plant that. So there's jobs involved in forestry. Where I come from, Canada, forestry is one of our, um, you know, one of our most important industries, one of our oldest and most important industries. Canada became a wealthy, developed nation thanks in part to its uh, lumber natural resource, you know, it's availability of lumber. A lot of people made a lot of money working in forestry, exporting lumber out uh, for construction. Uh, so this is like a tree farm or a nursery where trees are grown. Um, this is fishing. And this is called aquaculture, where um, rather than just going out and trawling the sea for wild fish, you can grow your own in a fish farm, basically. Construction. Okay, construction and civil engineering. So that word civil engineering is a term uh, for, um, you know, preparing the site, surveying, and planning um, so that certain areas of the city are designated for, like, residential construction where people will live, and commercial construction, where people will work in offices, and then industrial, where people will work in factories, and um, how those uh, areas will be connected through roads and train systems, um, and the electrical grid that will connect and power these. You know, that's what civil engineering is. This is mining, a quarry mine, or stone and um, this is a kind of, kind of a shale uh, it's, a, it's an oil but it's it's an oil that is embedded in sand so this is a shale quarry mine uh, and this is like more of an oil field where uh, liquid petroleum can be extracted for fuel again like urban planning urban uh, civil engineering how to plan a city that is um, 
capable of um, becoming um, like a financial center, I guess. A lot of cities are following this kind of a format, in Asia especially. The modern cities are, are very well planned nowadays, rather than um, having these chaotic looking uh, older cities <laughs> that just like grew and spread. Now you have centralized scientific urban planning uh, with, uh, you know, efficient uh, road systems and these different hubs where different economic um, activity takes place with lots of green space to uh, help with the air quality. Construction, I guess this is maybe a carpenter. Uh, this is a plumber. This is an electrician. Okay, continuing, we've got a little bit of time um, and a lot to cover, but I'm not gonna go for too long today. The secondary sector of the economy is comprised of the manufacturing industries which take raw material and produce products, the steel used to manufacture cars, wood taken by carpenters to make homes and furniture and cabin, cabinetry and so on. Um, so not all manufacturing companies make a complete product. They'll make a part, a component. Semi-manufacturing companies produce parts, components to be used in other products that have several stages of production. Construction, ah, that shouldn't be there. Let's continue. The manufacturing, food, beverage, Textile, fabric, apparel, clothing, wood, furniture mostly, paper, petroleum and coal, fuel and other uh, uses of petroleum, uh, chemical, plastics, <coughs> machinery, computers and electronics and appliances uh, and so on. Okay, so this is a butcher. You know, we, we buy meat at a butcher shop. It's part of the food industry, I guess. Uh, fish market, seafood, uh, dairy, milk and cream and cheese, vegetables, grains and nuts and seeds, um, a bakery. This is called fiber. Uh, fiber is the raw material. Again, like the agricultural industry is what gives us the um, you know the meats and cheeses and vegetables and grains and uh, snacks and so on. I didn't organize that very well, but you see that uh, you know from the agricultural industry, uh, um, the end product is what we buy at the grocery store. This is the raw material called fiber. It can come from plant like straw or cotton or animal like um, llama and sheep. Mm, this is a like a textile factory, I guess. These are, I believe, these are looms where they take thread and they weave it into a fabric or a textile, which can then be cut and sewn and um, assembled into clothing, apparel, or furnishing, or you know, um, carpets and. Lots of different applications for textiles, which is why it's a very, very popular uh, industry here in China, where you just make the type of fabric, a designer fabric um, of a certain material, of a certain quality, of a certain uh, thickness, I guess, and it can be made. It can be made useful for furniture and interior decor, or uh, industrial or office furniture and decor. I shouldn't say industrial, but office and commercial. Um, and uh, clothing, okay, so that's that's textile there. Apparel, a tailor, somebody who takes the textile, takes the fabric, and stitches it and sews it together into apparel, clothing. This is what um, a workshop would look like, where they stitch and sew uh, fabrics into apparel. Sewing. Stitching. Uh, lumber yard, where trees are cut and uh, then processed. So a sawmill 
is where you'll run um, a tree through a saw to shave off the unnecessary parts. That uh, sawdust can be reused in um, construction, like a lot of the um, a lot of the building material um, for the the structure of a um, a building or some uh, inexpensive furniture is this saw dust material that has been kind of molded back into a uh, fake wood. <laughs> Um, I think that um, wood is also, uh, obviously wood is also used for paper. So this is the structure of a house, and this is a carpenter, and this is high quality furniture. And this is a sawmill where that sawdust is then repurposed for paper, a um, paper mill. And um, yeah, we'll be looking at how paper is made and how um, how how textiles are made. Um, chemical refining. Chemicals are refined. Um, we'll look at that as well. So this is paint or acrylic. Uh, this is rubber. Plastic, rubber, chemicals like uh, petroleum. Uh, petroleum is a very, very petroleum is what we like. We burn fossil fuel, we burn oil and gas and so on. Uh, this is a byproduct of petroleum. When you when you mine from a well, you get crude oil or petroleum, and that gets refined. Um, a lot of it is used for fuel, but then. Uh, uh, some of it is used for these um, uh, chemicals, such as fertilizers for growing crops, uh, your detergents and your soaps, even your medicines. Um, concrete or um, quarry, I suppose. So you take this kind of a stone and you refine it into you know uh, a building material i believe this is metal smelting for uh well okay that's i guess this is glass glass manufacturing um oh okay so this is silica and silica you take uh you take this kind of a rock out of a quarry mine and um, you refine it into silica, and again, like you can, you can have clay, or you can have glass. Glass is um, comes from rock, basically. And this is a glass stained glass window. Um, Coming up to the end here, metal, that's called ore. Ore is kind of smelted and then turned into sheet metal or rod or, I um, can't remember, slag maybe, I can't remember, um, wire, wire. And this is molded or extruded metal. Um, welding and tool and die. So you'll make a sheet metal and well you can you can either like extrude metal through a mold to get this specially molded metal, like aluminum is usually used for uh, again construction. Um <clears throat> And then you have a tool and die where you take sheet metal and you stamp it uh, to get the necessary uh, configuration. Um, and uh, they have these robotic laser, um, these uh, these, these these robotic laser welding uh, machines now that can uh, make this beautiful 
Um, metal, metal work, I guess. And machinery, engines, uh, electrical tools, other kinds of components, uh, motors, appliances. Uh, lighting, batteries, computers, electronics, and so on. So actually, I'm not going to talk about the primary sectors today. That'll be in the next lesson. Um, summary. Yeah. In today's lesson, we have introduced all of the major industries in the primary and secondary, the extractive and manufacturing industries, the major ones. Uh, we looked at the chain of production model and um, the primary industries of the extractive industries. They extract natural resources, wood, uh, food, vegetables and fruits and meats and wool and uh, minerals and fossil fuels. There it is. They extract natural resources such as minerals, lumber, crop, and livestock from the land and the sea to be transformed into processed goods or raw materials for processed goods. Secondary industries are the manufacturing industries. I showed you a bunch of photos of some of those um, important industries, and we will be looking at these in greater detail with video and lots of vocabulary, if that's what you want. And tertiary industries, the um, service industries, which we'll get to much later. So that's what we'll do in another lesson. Um, we did it. OK. <laughs> so if you're new and you haven't joined the study group, simply scan the QR code. Join the WeChat group where I upload this uh, worksheet and give you updated information on upcoming lessons and give you the opportunity to communicate with me. Give me your suggestions for things that you would like to learn about. Or ask me any kind of questions about anything that I have covered in uh, you know, this class or uh, any of the other lessons that I've been teaching. So I really uh, want to thank you for joining me this evening, and I look forward to talking to you next week. Good night. <laughs>